We're going to be getting this message from Psalm chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Where could I go? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Amen. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The vain thing is defeating God. Sure, they don't think that they could actually defeat the being, but if we defeat the values, there's a pandemic happening. If we could stop them from serving God, if we could keep them home, they can't serve God. Why can't we serve God in our homes? Because the television's there. Our cell phones are there. Distractions are there. We ask God for deliverance. How can I serve you? I just want to serve God more. But how can I do it? Remove the distractions. You see, when you go to church, there's certain sets of boundaries, rules that you have to abide by. If you carry those rules with you, you're not living in God's word. And only living it, you're doing it. So you're no longer a hearer of it only, but a doer of God's word. But the people rage, the heathen rage, they're angry. They're angry because they are not happy within themselves and they're not content when anyone else is happy. Many people ask for friends. Be careful what you ask for. It seems like you always get someone that's the opposite of yourself. You're happy, they're upset. You're content, they want something. It always seems that way. Maybe not in the beginning, but it's coming. When the heathen rage is because they don't have an answer. Their answer is within their rage. They believe their answer is rage. But that's not an answer. That's a reaction to how you're feeling or an event that happened within your life or something that you may have heard. That's a response to what's around you. That's not a solution. The people of God have the solution. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. That's the solution. How could waiting on the Lord be the solution? If you build a house, you wait on the builder. If you're at the doctor's office, you wait on the doctor. If you need a solution to life, wait on God. You see, although kings and rulers of this earth may set themselves in array and have certain powers and partnerships in which they have agreed upon. It doesn't matter. God has the final say. God is the creator of all things. And it doesn't matter what we build or what we set aside for the times of destruction. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing because when God speaks, It happens. If he tells the dead to rise up again, they rise up. How much more you that's living? The point I'm trying to show you all is not so much the fear, but the foolishness in how we're living. We're living in something, believing that it is the solution, the real way to serve and have life. There's no solution. I'm angry, I fight. I'm angry, I steal. That's not a solution. You're in sins. 
Look, Satan could be angry right now, right this second. And he could say, you know what? I'm going to destroy this city or I'm going to destroy this nation and I'm going to destroy these people. It's just a response to his anger. But if we go a little bit further back, why are you so angry? I was once up there. 